So a number of 2020 presidential contenders showed up to the People's Action Forum in Iowa and the receptions that they received varied from very good to pretty bad. Now I want to show you two clips, one from Bernie Sanders and the other from Pete Buttigieg. Now they were both asked about health care and what they would do to make sure that people actually get health care and not just access to health care and make sure that people no longer die or go bankrupt in this country if they don't have health insurance. What you're going to see is <laughs> a really different response based on the answers that they give. So Bernie Sanders is going to give an answer that they love. Pete Buttigieg, not so much because he's going to give his usual spiel about Medicare for all who wants it. And it's obvious that the crowd isn't feeling what he's saying. So much so to the point where they actually start shouting Medicare for all at him during his answer. Mayor Buttigieg, you've said that competition can create a glide path to universal coverage with almost 30 million without health care, with over 40 million who are underinsured, with most Americans that cannot afford, afford a $400 emergency cost how are you going to help folks like Bree and prevent deaths like Jesse's as president? Well, thank you. We have accepted the unacceptable for far too long in this country. You should never have to ration needed medical supplies in order to get by. It is completely unacceptable, as is people dying because of inadequate medical care. We are the only developed country in the world that tolerates this. So what I propose is that we create a public alternative, one that everybody can afford, one that is backed with the subsidies that are required to make sure that income is not a barrier to cost, one that caps out-of-pocket costs and makes sure that 8.5% of income is the maximum that you pay. Now, as a progressive, I believe that public alternative will be better than any of the private ones. But instead of commanding people to take my alternative, I'm going to let people decide. Because the moment that that alternative is there, everybody can access health care. Now, for some reason, and union members are a good example, some folks don't prefer my public alternative. Okay. It's not important to me in principle that your health care come from the government. It is important to me in principle that you get health care no matter what. I think the public alternative will be better, and everybody will opt into it over time. But... Uh, and right now, the insurance, you might have seen the healthcare lobbyists put out a statement condemning my plan as uh, too much government. But if they come up with something better, we'll see. I just don't think it's going to happen, and I trust you to make the decision. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have a follow-up question. Can I just remind folks to please be respectful? Go ahead. So... <laughs> hey, folks, can we allow our speaker to yeah. ask the follow-up question? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm on your side, guys. Uh, <laughs> a market-driven approach has meant that 45,000 people die a year without health care, that a $6 vial of insulin is being sold for $300. That's we know right. as president you will be commander-in-chief. Will you be the healer-in-chief? Count on it. Thank Ow. you. I just told you. And uh, look, not everybody will agree with me, but I think the public alternative will be better. I believe the public plan we create will be the best one. I just don't think we have to command you to take it, because if I'm right, you'll take it. So that was absolutely great to see, because they know that Pete Buttigieg is full of shit. The industry talking points that he's using, they weren't buying it. And understand what he did there. He took a shot at Medicare for All. He said, instead of commanding people to take my alternative, I'm going to let them decide. So he's, again, lying about Medicare for All by trotting out this choice argument. But this is not real choice. Choosing between private and public health care is not choice. That's the illusion of choice. Where choice comes in, where it matters most to people, is being allowed to choose our doctors and hospitals. Medicare for All maximizes choice. His version of healthcare reform restricts choice. Let me repeat that. It restricts choice. Because let's say, hypothetically speaking, you buy into his public option 
and you want to see a doctor who is pretty close and who has great reviews on Yelp. Well, if that doctor is not in your network, if they don't accept Medicare, then guess what? You don't get to see that doctor. So he's lying to you about choice. He's misrepresenting what you want and he's not listening to you. We say we want choice when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to choosing our doctor, and he comes back with this bogus false choice of private public. That's not what we want. We want to choose our doctors and hospitals. We want the freedom to go where we want. We want the freedom to see a doctor even if we don't have money for a copay. But yet he's saying he's the one in favor of choice. He's lying. Now, on top of that, he said, it's not important for me that your health care come from the government. It's important to me in principle that you get health care no matter what. Now, the issue with this worldview is that he views health care as a commodity in the same way that video games and clothing and shoes are commodities. He thinks health care is also a commodity. He thinks that it is and rightfully should be a money making venture that that for profit motive in healthcare it's not corrupting our entire system there's no problem with it because i don't really care if you get healthcare from you know a private company or the government what matters is you get healthcare so in other words he doesn't believe that there's any issue with the commodification of healthcare and he doesn't want to change that now he pitched medicare for all who wanted which is a public option and after he gave his answer the crowd chanted, Medicare for all. And that was music to my ears. Anytime Pete Buttigieg says this, he says Medicare for all who wants it, people need to chant Medicare for all. Because here's the thing, he knows that Medicare for all is popular. So that's why he named his plan Medicare for all who wants it when it's a public option. He's trying to steal the popularity of that Medicare for all label and disingenuously argue to you like his plan, uh, argue that his plan would maximize choice. This man is a liar. He's full of shit. He's disingenuous. And the reason why he's no longer in support of Medicare for all after previously being for it is because, surprise, surprise, he started taking large sums of money from the healthcare industry. The only person in the entire 2020 race to take more money from the health industry than Pete Buttigieg, Donald Trump. Yeah. So this person does not have your best interest in mind, and they gave him a second chance to give a better answer because the market-based approach to healthcare has been a failure. So they let him answer the question again. You know, um, they asked what he'd specifically do to address their problems but he refused to answer the question. He said, I just told you. Right. But your answer wasn't sufficient. Hence why they're giving you a second chance to answer the question and address our specific concerns. He didn't do that. And that's why the crowd shouted Medicare for all at him. Now, we're going to contrast what you just saw. Pete Buttigieg's answer with Bernie Sanders' answer. So he was also asked a question about healthcare. Now pay attention to the crowd's reaction as he gives this answer. And also look at Bernie Sanders' face because you can see just genuine excitement about healthcare as he talks about it. Like there's a big smile on his face. He knows he's gonna give a phenomenal answer that's truthful and the crowd's gonna love it. Watch and see the difference here, not just in his answer, but the way the crowd reacts. Uh, our question to you today is how will your health care plan eliminate the financial and other barriers to care for people like Josh? And how can you make sure that all of us have access to the highest quality health care professionals so that none of us get left behind? I am happy to tell you what I think you already know, Kathy, that I am the author of the Medicare for All Single Payer Bill. I have believed, I have believed for my entire adult life that health care is a human right, not a privilege. We have a system today which is not only dysfunctional, it is incredibly cruel. And its cruelty is not just that 87 million people are uninsured or underinsured, 
it is not just that 30,000 people die each year because they don't get to a doctor when they should. It is not just that 500,000 people go bankrupt every year because of medical bills. It is a system designed to make billions for the insurance companies and the drug companies who charge us by far the highest prices in the world for the prescription drugs that we need. It is a system that last year made $100 billion in profits for the healthcare industry. So, my bill is pretty simple. We start off with Medicare, which is the most popular public health insurance program in the country. We expand it to cover dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. We make sure that there are no premiums. We got rid of premiums. No co-payments, no out-of-pocket expenses. In Canada, if you have a heart transplant and you're in the hospital for a month, you come out not owing a nickel. That's what I want in America. And when we talk about comprehensive health care, we're certainly talking about parity regarding mental health as well. And this program is paid for out of the general tax base. And the vast majority of the American people, except the very rich, will be paying far less for the health care they get right now than they are currently paying. Our job now is to have the guts to stand up to the greed and corruption of the insurance industry and the drug companies and tell them we're coming after them. Health care is a human right. That's right. So, I mean, the difference was clear. The crowd loved him. And the two people that were disappointed, obviously, in Pete Buttigieg's answer were behind Bernie Sanders, standing up and cheering for him. Because you know when someone is telling you the truth, and not trying to lie, not trying to gaslight you. Bernie Sanders gave an answer that's phenomenal. And he addressed their specific concern. He addressed the failure of a market-based approach to healthcare reform. Bernie Sanders made it very clear that his goal is to decommodify healthcare. Meaning that we're not going to have a healthcare system that is driven by the goal of maximizing profits. We're going to make this about the delivery of healthcare. And we can't do that unless we get the profit motive out of the system entirely. That's what Bernie wants to do. So he's not saying you can choose between private and public. He's saying, I'm giving you the most choice by empowering you to see any doctor in the country by having healthcare as a right of citizenship. Period. End of story. Now, on top of that, Bernie Sanders also distinguished between his plan and Elizabeth Warren's plan. He didn't cite her by name, but he mentioned that Mental health care will also be at parity with physical health care. It's going to be free at the point of service. Now, if you look at Elizabeth Warren's plan on her website, she doesn't really say that mental health will be free at the point of service. She essentially says that she'll reform the industry in a way that gives us affordable access to mental health care, which tells me she doesn't take mental health as seriously as Bernie Sanders, which is disappointing because mental health care is health care. And if you're going to look at health care reform, to leave out mental health care, but have everything else be free at the point of service, that's almost insulting, you know? Um, so Bernie is the real deal. I don't know what else to say. If you trust Pete Buttigieg, then I, I really don't know what to tell you. There's one person in this race who we can trust the most when it comes to health care and Medicare for all, and that is Bernie Sanders. And the crowd knows it. The crowd saw through Pete Buttigieg's nonsense. And they realize that Bernie Sanders is the one way we're ever going to get Medicare for all. If Bernie Sanders isn't elected, then I don't think we're ever going to get Medicare for all at the rate we're going. Because anyone who 
said they supported Medicare for All going into the primary, no longer supports it. And the one other person in the in the race that supports it, Elizabeth Warren, I don't really trust that she's going to fight for it. So if we want Medicare for All, we've got one shot. It's Bernie Sanders. That's it. Until somebody else comes along and runs for president, maybe AOC. I just can't ever see it feasibly getting past without a fighter for it. You're taking on an entire multi-billion dollar industry. You're taking on not just Republicans, but your own political party. So we don't just need a fighter. We need the best fighter imaginable to get Medicare for all passed. It's Bernie Sanders. It's not Pete Buttigieg. And I'm glad that the crowd saw that he is full of shit.